please be here? Nellie muttered, cursing herself for not looking earlier. Please, magic, saints, fairies, and all things good in this world, let me find the spell book. The resolve had gripped her as soon as she'd stepped foot on the glass platform, making her step right back off. Cadman was a knight, whether he realized it or not, and belonged in the trials. But not Ellie. She was a witch. And it was time the world knew. The book wasn't in her wardrobe, nor atop it. Not a bookshelf or windowsill. Growing desperate, she dropped to her knees and fished for it beneath her bed. She could picture it. Curling blue letters, musty brown leather, thick, aging pages. Roxy's words sang through her memory. The revelation she'd unleashed threatening to spill from her and consume her bedroom in magic. The one who cast the curse was here, likely preparing to intervene in the trials, meaning Cadman was in terrible danger. What's more, the witch hailed from the same land as Ellie's magic. If Ellie could find out where her own magic was from, she could figure out which old tongue the witch cast her curse in and finally track the witch. Hopefully before anyone else got hurt. Fortunately, there was a spell to discover one's own origins. But she needed her book. She nearly screamed. It wasn't under the bed, though she did find a dead mouse Bianca had likely been hiding. Groaning, she sat back in bed. Where are you? She whispered. Where would you be? She could still picture the first time she read it. The book had been tucked beneath her mother's bed for as long as she could remember. And Ellie had spent her life practicing self-control by not peeking to see what was inside. But year after year, it called to her. Ellie's cheeks heated at the memory of stealing it. Not because she stole it, but because she liked stealing it. She enjoyed yanking it out beneath the bed skirt and shuttering away in her closet to read by fairy light. Yes, her mother might yell at her if she found out. Yes, she loathed getting in trouble. But oh, the thrill of sneaking into her own corner, disobeying the one woman she tried so very hard to please. For in a small part of her heart, she knew she could never please Mother, never in a trillion years. The dragons could rise, the sky could fall, and still Mother would look upon her with scorn. So that day, fed up, with that temper Mother so deplored building in her chest, making her want to shatter glasses and scream. She stole it, and she had kept it tucked in her closet in Rose's and Needle's finishing school ever since. Of all the topics, it detailed the history of witch's magic, where it came from, what happened during the fall of Camelot, how it could become contaminated, and, likely why her mother kept it hidden, how that particular writer believed the theory of magic contamination had been a myth. And that clamping witches' powers was a mere ruse, a distraction to keep people from looking too closely at the real cause of the fall of Camelot. All her life, Ellie had been told witches would turn evil if they accepted the might of their magic. Yet there were voices, however small, who believed otherwise. The author of this mysterious book. And Cadman's. Accepting who you truly are is one of the bravest things a person can do. So maybe casting that spell won't make you evil. Maybe it will make you brave. In the hours since calling Galahad to her aid, which she was certain happened despite his mysterious disappearance, magic had been knocking against her mind, hunting for a way in. It didn't feel evil. It felt... Like home, like her truest self. At long last, it was time Ellie accepted who she was. Ellie steeled herself. She would be brave, not evil. It was time she became a full-fledged witch. A knock interrupted her thoughts. She peeked through the door hole, but no one was there. The knocking resumed. From below, the floorboards. Her fingers grazed the floorboards. Testing, pulling, until one came loose. She wrenched it up, revealing what she sought. The book seemed to glow, waiting for her, calling to her, to that slumbering magic in her bones. She flipped through it, pages as stiff and unyielding as she remembered, as if made from something tougher than parchment or paper. 
Something to last a thousand years. Her fingers paused, heart racing, as she arrived at the contents she needed. Witch's magic originates from three known locations in this world. There is a way to discover one's origins, but it requires a gift. Only those with magic in their veins can see the answers they seek. Prove you are worthy with the incantation below, and I shall reveal my secrets to you. She held her breath. Never once, in all the years she'd poured over Mother's book, had she dared to prove she was worthy. That she was a witch. Her gaze darted back toward the orchards, where other students had gathered at the cliff's edge despite the early morn, eager to judge who'd succeed and who would perish. Ellie? Ellie jumped at the crisp accent, the concerned tone. Omari Evelyn stood in the doorway, sweating. She's here, isn't she? He gasped. The woman who cast the curse. Ellie nodded. Omari Evelyn was in her bedroom. She could scream. But this was not the time for screaming. This was the time for magic. I'm a witch, she blurted. He backed into the door. Your... what? I'm sorry I kept it secret, but I can't let the Dejoise clamp my powers. And now I have to cast the spell to accept my witchcraft. It's the only way to find the person who cast the curse. Please don't hate me. Don't be afraid of me. I... Hey. Omari shook his head and knelt beside her. I'm... Surprised, but I'm not afraid of you. He took her hand and squeezed it. And how could I hate the girl who reminds me of my little sister? I think you're really brave. He gently withdrew his hand and smiled, oblivious to how his words speared her, reminding her. Omari Evelyn had a girlfriend and only saw Ellie as a little sister. As a replacement little sister, no less. Even if he didn't have a girlfriend, Ellie wasn't ready for things like boyfriends. It felt too adult, and she was still trying to figure out what having friends felt like. Amari was older than her, and not an option. I'm here for you, whatever you need to do. Ellie swallowed. That was more than she had ever hoped for. And today, now, she could be grateful that as she accepted her true self, there was someone standing by her side. She clenched her shaking hands. If I turn into an evil monster, don't let me kill anyone. He laughed. Never. There'd be no going back after this. No reversing the magic. The moon tattoo would appear on her hand, marking her forever. Not only that, everyone would know she'd lied. Registered witches and sorcerers never developed the birthmarks. The magic wasn't strong enough. But when an unclamped witch or sorcerer accepted the entirety of their magic, the mark was there for all to see. And people knew to run in fear. Heart pattering, she took a deep breath. The spell she'd known and ignored all her life rising to the surface, breaking free. She was breaking free. A witch of yore, I claim my magic now. From dusk to dawn, my power rightly reigns. The window panes shattered, sending Bianca hissing and diving beneath her blanket. Her toes hopped to and fro, and a whoosh of silver sparks swirled around her hair, lifting her curls to the sky. Warm energy shot from her heart to her limbs, then out to the world, spearing toward the sky in crimson and silver ribbons. A storm cloud gathered in her room, starlight and lightning raining down upon her, as a great flapping echoed in the distance. She beamed at Amari. Ellie was a full-fledged witch.